each other. Now, in the in classical sword, you may or may not know how this works, but in, in, class, in the classical martial arts, the senior person, the teacher, takes the losing role. Okay? So if you watch films and you watch and you see who's winning, he's the junior guy. That allows the teacher, the idea is the teacher is the one who knows more and so can, he can always press the other guy just right to bring out the next level that he's trying to get to. So if we were doing a classical style, when we stepped out here, if there needed to be any adjustment, the senior person would make it so that we're starting off in the right place. What we have to do, because the way we do things, there isn't any designated issue that way, okay? And so we, we both have to make a little bit of an adjustment once we step out. So, you know, if we're experienced, we come to here and we already know that this is pretty much just about the right place. And you know this just from doing it a lot. Then we step out, okay? What I'm looking for is a couple, in, when we're in a good Kamai with a forward attitude, there's a couple inches in between the blade. Okay? There are really three spacings. No touch, just by a couple inches. Overlapping by about three to four. And then right about middle, or just on the other side of the middle. This is your critical distance here. This is the point at which something has to happen. If we try and get any closer, some, somebody needs to have done something, okay? This is, this is really, you don't start here. You might meet here in the course of moving around, but you, the, that's the distance at which, boy, it's like things are boiling and something's going to happen, and probably the first one to move will get the other guy because you're getting so close, okay? Once again, what do you want to do? If we were sword fighting and I was pretty sure the other guy was better than I was, I would want to have distance between our blades. Okay, because for somebody who's good, touching the blade gives me a lot of information about what he's doing. Okay, so I would say for beginners, use this spacing, generally. Okay, later you can play with touching the blade. Okay, so now on this one, my partner goes into Gedon Hasso. I, and let's move this way, because you're going to have to back up. I will initiate with Shulman. Okay. Now, in this one, instead of, instead of moving back, just switch feet. So it's my job to go to the distance that I would be correct for hitting him. Okay. Don't move at all. I'm going to this distance. For the form, if you were trying to kill me, he'd step in. He'd be going forward. He has three choices. Forward, stay in place, move back. Okay? For the form, stay in place. Just switch feet. Don't change the distance. If he does that, he'll have me here. Now, this is the, the, if he's in the mind, of the mind to spare my life, this is the space he needs to be in. If he'd stepped back, he beat my attack, but I don't, he doesn't have me and I don't have him, which means something else will happen. If he stays in place and he chooses not to smash down and cut my wrist like we talked about yesterday, he can place his tip here and have me in a position where there is no move I can do without him killing me. Okay? So this is what we're talking about. If we're talking about the idea of sparing the other guy's life, I'm the one who has to decide I don't want to die. He's got the space. If I decide to try and do something, he just finishes me. And there's no, there isn't, if I want to hang on to the attack, there's no way for him to save me from this. Okay? But what he's doing is he's allowing me to see that I'm in an untenable position. Okay? And I can't move. So, obviously, I can't afford to get caught here. If I get caught here, it's over once again. Okay? So, when you come in here and you watch this guy coming, running this spiral, remember we talked about there is a column of force in front of the object. I don't have to wait till we get to here 
to decide to block. Right? What he's going to do, he's going to deflect me. And then for the form, since he didn't, didn't get me, he's going to move forward with a ski. Just slide. And you can slide the front foot. So he's, what he's doing here to facilitate the form, he's purposely doing a two-beat movement. When if we were fighting, he'd have done a one. Okay? okay? So that allows me to do a two-beat movement. So I cut, and he deflects. He skis, and I block. And I, we go, I go to that place we were talking about. If I'm back here, he doesn't have to do that. So I'm coming here. I'm keeping light touch with his weapon here, and I'm protected. I get to here, and now he's got to step back and block. Okay? Now, right there, get the tip towards my center. There. You defend against this by turning your hips, but the tip stays here. That way, when you turn your hips back, there's the ski. All you do is turn your hips back towards me. If you're here, I can fill the space, come in, and butt strike. That, you have to own the center line. The whole thing. If you look about what's, what's happening in these kumitachi, they are largely a battle for who's got this line. And what you're doing when you're not cutting them is forcing them to the outside so that you own the line. Okay? So that first deflection, when you come in to cut, if I do the spiral deflection, okay, I own it because I'm on top, and I've put you underneath. Then when you block, you're trying to get, oh, you're trying to set up a new line now. So I go, no, I think I still want you on the outside. And he's still worried about this. He comes in here and I says, I'll stick to you and no, I'm not going to let you have that line. Okay? Sometimes you'll even see, some of the later Kumitans are somewhere you cut the knee, say. So you go for my knee. Well, I step back. So why do I need a block at all? I'm safe because of my body movement. And this will be true in almost all of them. You're actually safe because of your body movement. Why do I need to block? Because I don't want him to own the line and be able to come with a fast ski. So the block will happen as I step back so that I'm the one who's still got the line. I'm still forcing him off center. If the sword comes from out here, it doesn't do you any good until it gets to here. Whereas here, the sword is already on the line. It's already to butt strike if we're close. I can step back from here. I can step in from here. I'm already there. Whereas this, I can't do anything until it gets here. Okay? So there's no out here. If it's coming up, it comes straight up the line. If it's coming down, it comes straight down the line. Okay? When I'm here, I should, the place where this foot goes is the place where I can cut him with full extension, cutting with about the last, say, six inches of the blade. Good Kamai, weight forward. If you're here, you're too close. If you're here, you're actually still too close because you don't have weight forward. You could have been out here and hitting him. Okay. And obviously, if you're here, you're not close enough. Okay. So this is the place right here. Boom. You notice I'm at his side now. When we do the empty hand technique and we do triangle movement, it's the same triangle. Okay. In empty hand, a lot of the time, we'll do the triangle movement. One, two, three, and we throw off that. In weapons, there's a lot of the time when you move out to the point of the triangle, and what completes the triangle is the weapon. 
not your body. So I'm out here. Now you see, it's the same line. If I had moved along there, I'd be throwing him now. But instead, I complete the line with the weapon. That's what this really is. Okay? It's a cut. Okay? But what, what has to change? Okay? Look at the timing. No longer can I afford to receive his deflection physically and wait till he's... Because we're not getting a two-beat move. He's got me on one. I'm still waiting for two, three. No, not anymore. So what has to happen is, I go into this movement because the column of force in front of his cut pushes me there. So when I come in at him, I see what's going on, and I move. Okay? Does that make sense? But if we do that, we don't get to do all the cool stuff at the end of the form. So we agree not to. Okay? Does everybody see how this form thing works? It ain't fighting. Fighting, I'm trying to finish it on the first move. He's trying to finish it on the first move. If we're doing the form, the awase is that we are actually agreeing with each other to produce the movement that will produce the next movement. Okay? This is by agreement. So we go back and we're doing the form again. So he doesn't step forward. And I don't slip it. I receive it. Now this is a deflection, and this is functioning as my antenna. Now I'm letting him feel why he doesn't want to stay there. I'm projecting my attention in here, and he says, you know, I can't stay here any longer. Before that, he was thinking how to get this blade to my side or my wrist. But if I'm in the right place now, he's not thinking that anymore because the speed with which he can do that is not any different than I can do that. So at this point, we have Ayuchi. And if he lets me stay here any longer and keep moving in, it won't even be Ayuchi. It'll be I win. They see the butt cap. That's it. Right? So guys, remember when you're in Gaidon Hasso, your opponent should not see your blade. They only see the Kashira, the butt cap. Now he goes back. Good. Now if you watch what he does, somebody tosses you an egg. You ever done the egg toss? Throw an egg, catch the egg. Well, you're catching an egg. You don't go thwop. That egg comes to you and you cradle it. Okay? When my partner comes here, okay, now go up again. When he raises, I kind of raise with him because I don't know where he's going yet. Could he go that way now? Yes, he could. He could still fool me. Okay? I could come up looking like I'm here and go, and be on the other side. So I, when he raises, I come up. But once he commits, I turn my hips. And then actually, as we're bl blocking here, I go, ah. If I can go, ah, enough, I'm on top. Now, I'm not pushing it down. That's a problem. I'm just relaxing. If I don't get on top, I don't get on top. It means he's not cutting hard enough. If he's cutting from me, ah, this is enough. Okay? All I want to be is where he can't easily flip this over. That's enough. Then, I'm in a place where I can attack. So, that's what we're doing. I want to go to that place.
once again now, with him riding me this way, I'm the one who's open. I don't have right now a good attack on him. Okay? Not if he's, not if he's really doing this right. Okay? Move over just a hair. He's got me. So now once again, this is my antenna. There's a little back pressure, just the lightest of, so that if he started to ski or, okay, I'll feel it, okay? Now, in the form, since he has arrived at this place, is solid, owns the center line, I'm the one who has to go around. So I move here as if I expected him to ski. Now, in the form, he doesn't. But I have to move as if, because he could. He could be here. So I move under my sword, go to the same spot on that side that we were on that side, where now I can cut him faster than he can finish it, or as fast. And he's starting to worry about this. Okay? Go to here, now he steps back. And I cut again, and he blocks again. Yes, and tip. This actually makes a huge difference. If you're even here, I can get you. Does everybody see this? Okay. This is one of the reasons why weapons training is so important, because it's incredibly precise, especially sword, because it's razor sharp. It's not a power issue, okay? He doesn't need a lot of power. If he can get this blade placed someplace and just go, that can be enough. So things have to be not just close enough for government work, but nigh on perfect. Okay? Does everybody see that? So if you watch, if he's dead on here like he should be, and he's on top of my weapon, okay? If I tried to cut his leg, I'm, don't, why would you respond? You own the line. I go, I run right onto his blade. There's no need for you to respond. You own this line. If I try and do anything that stays on the line, I'm toast. The tip is dead on center the whole time. Okay? If he's coming in here with a big strike, I turn my hips more so that my arms project into the vector. But my tip is still always at my partner. If it drifts at all, they can enter in. One of the things that people forget about is that there's another end of this sword, and you can butt strike with it. Okay? So if he pushes my blade too hard for one thing, I'll come in here and boom. It's one of the reasons you don't push on people's blades. Okay? Wait a little while, wait till you're threatened a little more. Now, that would be it. Okay. And the reason for that is that you're still looking to see if you can get that wrist. If I, if I did this badly, if I were here, and I went up here, and then I suddenly went, you want to be where you can cut that. Okay? So if, if you start going back, the moment I get aggressive, you vacated that space, and you didn't own it. Nobody owns it. If you, nobody owns it, I move in. Okay? So he's filling it and making me go around, and now he has to go. Okay? So sometimes people allow the young intention of their enemy to push them back, and they get pushed back by that intention and not the fact that the guy has gotten to the correct space physically to threaten them. Okay? That's why I was saying to you guys, okay, you have to develop the strong spirit so that no matter what's going on, you have a forward attitude. When I'm stepping back and blocking, I'm still forward. I'm going, and I'm thinking, how do I ski? If I let him push me back, 
because of the aggressiveness of his attack, I'm vacating. And he'll take the center line away from me then. And if he's good, he will never let me get it back. This issue of blocking. First of all, not a block. For, you know, if I can avoid it. Three spacings, always, when your partner's coming. Say so you're coming with showman. With sword. So he's coming here. I have three spacings. We talked about this just briefly. Go back again. I can go in. Now, if I go in in this position, it's a finishing move. It's not a block. It's a cut. If I stay in place, however, now it's a block. If I back up, it can be a slipping move, in fact, which can later you can get to what that does or doesn't do. Okay? So when we're doing the form, we're consciously blocking. So he comes in and I'm cutting, and, and in, the, in the basic context of this, this is a block. And this is going to be a block. And what he's trying to do is not only block it, but deflect it enough that he has the line still, that he could, con could continue, he could counterattack from that. So he's trying to set up a situation where he might be able to take the initiative away from me. Okay, everybody see that? If he's too frontal on that, if, his, if he's keying off me, then he puts the sword out. And it looks like it's blocking, right? Because I'm here. Looks great. But the energy's in my sword tip. That won't block anything. Okay? So when we're at this distance and I am cut, he has to turn his hips. And there. Beautiful. This is crucial. He owns this line. See, I see this big space here. Wow, look at that good opening. But... Trying to get to that opening means I get skewered. I can see it. I want to be there. But he owns the line. Okay? Now, occasionally, you'll see somebody coming, and you'll see the block out here. Well, how come I can do that? Because we're farther away. In other words, at that distance, if I back up, Say, say do Yokoman, because it will tie it into the way it was with the form. Okay? If I'm here, I need to block it with a real block that will hold and then maybe counter. But what if he's coming here? Remember we talked about the whole idea of making, making, the, making yourself safe with your body? If he's coming here at me and I step back, okay, if I'm way back here, I don't need a block. So why do I bring my sword up at all? Because I want to own the center line. So now this can be out here, if you see what I'm saying. He's, if I'm here and he's aiming at my neck, I better not be here, because he'll cut right through it and cut me. If I'm here and that's coming in, I better put it right there. But if I've stepped back and made myself safe already, all I want to do is hold the line. So it can be out here. In the form, the distance we're performing at is basically, you know, everybody's taking one step and our spacing stays relatively the same through the whole thing, if you look, right? Once I enter in, now I'm entering in in order to strike him. I go to the distance where I could strike him, which means he's at a distance he could strike me, assuming that my arms aren't way longer than his or I'm not using some huge hunker boken. So then when I move out of the way, I don't move in and I don't move out. I move around the circumference because he's at a distance he can cut me. Well, that distance is great for me. I just want to be over here. Now I cut him. Now what he does is he says, no, I'm going to make myself safe with that. And he steps back. Okay, but because I'm, yeah, he can be a little bit out here. But if he's too out here, I can still reach in and get him because I, I have the ability to shift here. So he's got to be mostly there. Yes. Then I'll go over here, do the same thing, force him back. 
And if he gets too frontal, if he's king off me, and not the energy in my sword, he's going to be there, and I'm going to cut through. So, boom, yes. Now, this forces me to do something different. Why? You know, I already want, did one cut. I tried to go for another opening. He's filled that opening. Why am I going to waste this cut and bash my sword into his? Okay? I'm going to try something different this time. And so in the form, what Sensei has you do is change this cut, which is, I'm looking at this posture, I'm going, this is not going to collapse. I can see he's structurally sound here. So I change it from a cut to a deflection. I usually touch their gi on center, so fill the space. So as, as I feel him releasing and drawing back, I'm following with my feet. Take little steps to do this. Don't lunge. If you lunge, he stops at an unexpected place, you're going to poke him and hurt him. Okay? So by the end here, when you watch, okay, start here again. I'll make one, one big step, and I'll cut, and when I realize I'm going to spiral it, then it's boop, 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 boop. Lots of little spaces to get here. And what he does, he feels my momentum. And he keeps going back as long as he thinks, I'm going forward, and maybe I'm not in control. The moment he realizes that I'm in control on my forward movement, he will stop and allow me to catch up and get in. Okay? So this is a big communication about spatial stuff, even doing this. Now, say he's here. Okay? This is why Sensei wants the thing in here. Okay? And, and most of you, when you're beginners, will not be at this distance, because operating this close, somebody gets hurt until you get very good. So you're probably going to be here. But at this distance, he doesn't actually have me. This is not a giving up. The reason you don't collapse in here and resist this is because from here you can't do a thing. But if I give way and I have my attention here, okay, I can move from this. Okay? I can go here and go here. I can go here and here. I can do this faster than he can react. Okay? So this is a Kamai. This is another guard posture. And when he comes in properly and he doesn't give me any space, now there isn't anything I can do. I don't, he, he, at this distance, he's got me. I try and do something, he, he finishes it. So then we have this moment of communication where I acknowledge to him, yeah, you got me. Now you don't necessarily see this, but he feels it. You know, I, I stop and I go, then he slides back one step. At that point, he's released me, and I slide back. We're here. Then we return to our original places. Okay? Now, not, not the starting place, the where we went from the draw. So we actually get back out to here. Then, the way I do this, this is, there's no set rule for this. I take, because we don't have scabbards. If we had scabbards, you'd, you'd have a, several different ways to do this. But the way I do this... Okay. I take this back as I bring my foot up. Okay. Then I let go with the left hand, let the sword come down, and re-grab 